Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Welcome back. It is your boy, the Wolf of Crypto here. You guys listen to another episode of the Crypto Millionaire Journey. Today's topic, man, uh, is a project called uh, Helium. Uh, ticker is HNT. And I think this is going to be one of my new projects that obviously, when we talk about mining and uh, earning cryptocurrency in that form, um, it's probably one of the best ways I would say probably to earn crypto, um, but not every cryptocurrency obviously offers that type of opportunity. I've had experience with, uh, the electronium miner and that was actually pretty dope because, you know, I was basically mining ETN every day. Uh, obviously before they axed the um, program. Now that I've been mining with Pi, um, this Helium project, man, it's it's got me, you know, one to really get into this whole mining thing and starting to pick up some miners. Um, not the ones that are difficult where you got like basically like build up and all that stuff, but I got some ones that are pretty much real simple, real easy, basically like having like a router. Uh, and simple but as far as like the helium project um gotta say as far as the type of users that are on the platform right now not a lot so i think that's a big opportunity to look at but helium is a people-powered network that is allowing people to start a re wireless revolution powered by the helium blockchain the people's network represents a paradigm shift for decentralized wireless infrastructure. Um, right now, the network is live as far as how many hotspots are out there currently mining at the moment. We're almost at that 20,000 mark uh, as far as circulating supply of HNT, only 76 million um, and some change. Now, when you look at the network map, you're actually uh, able to kind of get an idea of like, hey, you know, what are some of these people mining? Like, you know, what's their what's their balance? How much do they how much H and T are they getting daily? You know, weekly. Um, and it's kind of cool because you know, you just kind of go throughout the different states and you kind of see like, okay, who's mining where where there might be potential at to, you know, start kind of like your own little army of just miners and start getting that HNT pretty much every day. But when you go and let's see, I'm going to click on this person's uh, little name just to kind of get an idea of like, all right, let's see how much have they been mining. Um, and it looks like they're kind of new. So... In the last 24 hours, they've been able to mine one HNT. Last 30 days, they've mined 5.13 HNTs. And remember, HNT right now is currently worth $4.11. Uh, so it looks like he has about two hotspots that's going on at the, at the same time that are synced to his account. Um, there's different challenges and different ways to earn mining rewards and you get all your transaction history on the little activity page, which is kind of nice. And they also have, uh, an app that goes with this as well that you're able to kind of basically sync to see all these different analytics and stats as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to find somebody else to see, you know, Hey, somebody has been mining some of these for a while. Let's see what type of account do they have. Like, so like I found another one right now. Looks like he has a lot going on. And yeah, uh, not too shabby as far as his last 24 hours. His last 24 hours, he's been able to mine about 5.82 HNTs. Last 30 days is about 403. And the last year, he's been able to mine 2,045. So. You put that in perspective a little bit. Let me go ahead and put 2045. So in the last year, he's been able to mine about $8,409 at the current price of Helium. Not too shabby. Uh, for basically just a hotspot that you just run all day. Uh, I mean, just collect rewards. And there's a couple different 
places you guys can buy these uh, hot spots right now though it is tough to get them because they're not like shipping out for a couple weeks so you got like basically pretty much print a pre-order um, and they got all these different little unique things about each one of them um, it just depends on which one you actually decide to use uh, but as far as the mining, a uh, mine is a new way to mine crypto by deploying a simple device in your home or office. You can provide your city with miles of low power and network coverage for billions of devices and earn cryptocurrency, which is obviously the HNT. Uh, you, when you mine HNT with hotspots, it's done via rail technology, not expensive or wasteful GPUs. You can build networks. Hotspots work together to form a new global wireless network in an undertake called proof of coverage. And like I said, you can choose your different hardware. Hotspots are built by a variety of vendors. You can even do it yourself, build one if you want. But me, I'm like, let me go ahead and just buy the one that's ready to go. All I gotta do is plug it in. Simple, easy. As far as the use, uh, massive decentralized connectivity. Hundreds of companies and thousand developers are already building on the People's Network, which is the world's largest and fastest growing LaRaw WAN network. And as far as LaRaw WAN, I that's a little tricky to say. I got kind of dived on into exactly what that exactly means. Um, but there's thousands of existing solutions, sensors, devices, and gateways can be easily configured to run LongFi, which is a powerful blend of LaRaWAN and blockchain technologies. You have an open alternative. Uh, the People's Network is built on an open source technology and government by an open alliance, scalable and affordable. Say goodbye to expensive sale contracts on Helium, a sensor can cost cents to run a year. Ooh, that's pretty, pretty wild. And then there's that LaRawan compatible, utilize thousands of existing sensors, chipsets, and MCUs for streamlined development. And uh, Helium's being used by, you know, a couple of, a couple of different companies right now. Um, I think the ones that stick out to me the most is Lime and Salesforce. I'm pretty familiar with those companies. Obviously, Lime's, you know, Lime Scooters. And as far as the core technology, so this is where it gets a little, a little interesting. So the People's Network is made possible through sophisticated open source technologies that aim to create a truly decentralized and trustless model for building wireless infrastructure. So as far as the tokens and data credits, the network uses two units of exchange, HNT, which is a new cryptocurrency, and then you got data credits. Um, as far as uh, the People's Network, which is obviously creating an entirely new wireless economy that flips the traditional telecom model of building wireless infrastructure on its head. They're using a burn and mint equilibrium token model. The People's Network utilizes the two units of exchange and the HNT, which is the new cryptocurrency hotspots that earn for providing and validating wireless coverage. And when devices on the network connect to the internet through hotspots, then you have data credits, which are used by devices to send data on the network and for blockchain transaction fees. Data credits are created by burning HNT. They are not exchangeable and tied to a single user. Um, as far as the distribution goes. So the year one breakdown, um, we got 30% network data transfer awarded for hearing devices and relaying their packets to the internet. 35% is the hotspot infrastructure awarded for participating in witnessing and creating proof of coverage challenges. Other 35% is the Helium Inc. and investors assigned to founders, investors, or organizations who will manage the blockchain governance. So as far as the HNT distribution over time, the distribution of HNT changes over time to align incentives with the needs of the network. In the early days, a high proportion of HNT is allocated to hotspot owners for building securing the coverage. But as the network grows, hotspots earn more for transferring device data on the network. And why and while Helium Inc. and investors earn less, after 20 years, distribution is no longer adjusted and remained fixed, which is pretty cool. Um so we got the network data transfer rewards. These data transfer rewards are issued a one-on-one -on -one ratio to HNT expenditure and are capped at 30% in year one of all mint HNT. The remainder is granted, <clears throat> excuse me, 
The remainder is granted to the proof of coverage rewards pool as a bonus for providing early coverage. Um, we got the max supply, which is 223 million HNT. And the HNT supply comes from mining with a compatible hotspot that both mines HNT and creates network coverage for IoT devices. All HNT was mined from Genesis starting at a rate of 5 million HNT a month. And then halving every two years. Ooh, so that's something that you gotta keep in mind. Halving is happening every two years with them. On August first, two thousand twenty-one, the net H and T issuance will be reduced to two point five million H and T per month. Ooh, so write down that date, folks. August first, two thousand twenty-one. There's a halving happening for H and T. Um, as far as the net emissions, net emissions effectively recycle a pool of burned HNT available for use in rewarding hotspots when they are lo no longer enough provided through minting. Now, net emissions are capped at 1% of the current issuance, which is about 3,424 HNT minted per epoch. Uh, the system monitors DC usage on the network and adds that amount up to the cap onto the issu issuance supply. The net emission allows rewards to exist in later years while also not extinguishing defl deflationary pressure after the cap has been reached. After the cap is exceeded, HNT value should increase, satisfying a burn emit equilibrium explained below. And yeah, the way they're kind of explaining like how as the minting decreases, the supply decreases, um, they're basically saying that the value of the token should continue, continue to go up. Um, Cause obviously <laughs> they're burning their tokens. They're having a halving every two years. Uh, so this, like I said, this, this project is very interesting. Um, as far as the data credits. So the data credits are the only payment accepted to send data over the people's network. Data credits allow users to transfer bytes of data via Helium long fi and used for blockchain transaction fees. The price of data credits is fixed in USD, which is one data credit equals like basically point something of a penny. Uh, like prepaid cell phone mints or airline miles, data credits are non transferable and can only be used by the original owner. And then to acquire data credits, network users convert HT or obtain them from an HT owner. Any HNT converted to data credits is probably removed, which is basically burned from the circulating supply. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Every time you make some data credits, guess what you're doing? You're burning it, and that's just helping the supply of not having to deal with this inflation that we currently deal with with the fiat dollar. Um, HNT is burned, is removed from the circulating supply, and creates DCs. DCs are created, used by devices in order to use the network. Uh, let's see here. Now, as far as this proof of coverage, the proof of coverage is a unique work algorithm that uses radio waves to validate hotspots uh, that are providing legitimate wireless coverage. For this validation, work hotspots can earn HNT by verifying network transactions, adding new blocks to the blockchain, and performing other tasks. Um, so as far as this long fi goes, long fi combines the Loran wireless protocol with Helium blockchain. So any Loran device can transfer data on the Helium, net Helium network. Long fi delivers roaming capabilities and supports micropayment transactions. So customers only pay based on network usage without needing to deploy gateways or network servers. Um, devices can relay through every hotspots. The micropayments are devices that pay for the access with data credits. And then as far as the Loran support, I gotta figure out what that exactly means. Uh, Cause that's like my first time even hearing that term. And then right now you can get a hotspot for free, if I'm not mistaken. Um, trying to think, there's a, there's a site I need to find and they'll send you one. They'll send you the first hotspot, and that's the thing. You can only get one hotspot 
for free. Uh, and then after that, you got you know, basically buy your miners. But it does take a minute to get here. I'm still waiting for mine to get here. Mine should be here, hopefully, either this week or next week. Um, Because that would be, like, I want to get on this bad boy, like, ASAP. Because uh, there's just so many different incentives for basically just helping the network, man, contributing, being being one <laughs> with the rest of the network. Like they, like they say, it's the people's network. Right now is a great time to really kind of try to capitalize on even uh, mining this bad boy because the way their supply, how their supply works with this whole burning and minting thing, you know, that's going to be very, very interesting to keep your eye out on because, like I said, as these halvings happen and supply gets decreased more and more, You've been mining for a while, as you guys can see, with all these other different cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, um, any freaking coin that you can mine. You do your work early, it pays off in the long run. Uh, so for me, and my new project, and this could be something for you guys that, you know, for those of you that are not always looking to necessarily, you know, buy crypto. Uh, there's always different ways to earn it, and mining is one of them. And mining, at least for me, has been one category I feel like I really haven't had the chance to really dive into a certain extent where it's like, oh, okay, now I'm going to be pulling in some money because going through some of these other different hotspots, seeing some of their stats, seeing some, some of these numbers... Uh, especially like, I mean, for something that's just in the background, you don't got to do anything. It's kind of a nice feeling. And let's just say, you know, how thing happens, right? In August, well, if the price by that time gets like, you know, 10, 15 bucks. I mean, right now the all time high was about what? Five bucks. So it's like, it's got potential for me. I would love to have a huge, not necessarily a huge mining setup. I mean, depends on how much it would all cost me. But if I can get like some of these other people, such see some of these stories I've seen and some of these other different videos of people just mining, it's low key kind of lucrative, man. Like, you talk about passive income, that's probably the most passive way you can really get it. And. All you're using is your internet. So, again, as soon as mine gets here, I cannot wait to set mine up. Because I'm curious to see how much I'll earn with, obviously, this basic little hotspot. But best believe I would definitely be buying and picking up some other miners and seeing, you know, what's, what's the magic recipe to earned a I would say what something that you can smile at some type of number I don't know what number it would be for me because again I haven't started it yet but I do know like even with pi right now where I mine pi even though right now there's no intrinsic value uh what within the first two months I believe earned about 200 and it's like man imagine if there was a value to it and I'm earning an average of 200 a month. And, like, you know, they're worth about five bucks a piece or something. Like, it's solid. Solid because then you can use it to go maybe buy some other crypto, go invest somewhere else. The passive income game is, is something that that's all I'm really trying to get to at this point like I ain't all that active income I'm cool on it passive let me let me just have a bunch of setups where I just got money just coming in whether that be from mining APR compounding interest earning through different uh, platforms because again right now man 
market still kind of eh, seems very stagnant doesn't know where it wants to go but if you guys haven't checked out helium HNT check it out let me know what you think or if you already are mining you already got your couple hot spots curious to know you know how long have you been mining for because some people feel like oh it's not worth it I don't know for me I'm optimistic I make I'll make it do I don't care if it's a hundred thousand hey in the day it's it's income and you're not doing anything for it <clears throat> Which is the best thing about it. You don't got to do anything. Just literally turn on the machine. Let that bad boy run. And it is creating you. It's creating you wealth. I mean for me that's. That's what it's about. Passive income wealth. Like let me. Let me tap in. I need it. But. That's going to wrap it up as far as. This episode of the Crypto Millionaire Journey. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Appreciate you guys tuning in, listening. Um, got some, like I said, got some big things coming. Hopefully, I'll be moving here pretty soon. But as far as you different projects, man, and different ways to invest, uh, I got to say, looking forward to it. Stuff keeps me up at night. I cannot emphasize that anymore. But as far as podcasts, you guys can check it out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Castbox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public. You guys want to send a message? You guys can always send a message in on Anchor. But hey, mining folks. If you that's that's your word. That's your term or word that you should do a little research. Crypto mining. Look it up. Wait about it. Maybe it's not for you. But if it is for you, I'm telling you right now, be early to that project where they allow you to mine. Because, like I said, mining is probably the easiest, easiest way to earn crypto. But it's your boy, Move from Crypto. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And until the next episode, like I say before and I'll say it again, I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> this is not any type of financial consultation advice. So please, investing is risky. Invest at your own risk. Invest only what you're willing to lose. And until the next time, y'all, peace.